I think the conference is fantastic. It's a wonderful opportunity for uh, plain language practitioners and those interested in plain language um, all over the world to come together and to share our passion. There's not a week in our office that we don't pick up this book uh, and consult it. And it is one of the true great international guides to, uh, to usage that does something very unique and that is base its work on evidence. And I found a lovely letter to the Sydney Morning Herald, somebody who was um, commenting on a quote from Winston Churchill. And uh, the quote said, all that matters is he goes. And uh, this person said, it should have been, all that matters is he go, uh, using the mandative subjunctive. So there are people out there watching and making sure Winston Churchill catches up. Um, <laughs> of, of course, the whole point is that Winston Churchill is speaking British English. And this uh, usage had gone down downhill there. And I said to the, 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 the taxi driver, uh, you know, uh, where in Boston can I get scribed? And he said, I'm, I'm sorry. I said, yeah. <laughs> where in Boston can I get, can I get scribed? And he, he said, sorry. And, and I said, well, you know, I just want the, you know, the, the, the fish soup, do you, do you know, you know scribed. He said, oh, I, 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 he said, um, I, I heard what you said. I've just never heard it in the pluperfect subjunctive before. <laughs> Health communication is my passion because I feel like if, if we don't understand information about our health and we can't make good decisions, then you know, we, can't, we, we can't go forward in our lives with, with energy and vitality and vigor. We're going to uh, touch upon the way that we've been working with uh, plain language in a government and public agency environment in Sweden for many years now. I'll be speaking with Joanne Locke. Um, we're talking about Ginny Riddish's new book, Letting Go of the Words, and how it influenced changes on healthfinder.gov. Well, welcome to this next session. We've got lots to get through um, from our three very inspiring speakers. We have Candice Burt from South Africa, Anita Cheek from the US, and Rachel McAlpine from New Zealand. So we're going to start by hearing from Candice. When we were looking for inspiration one day for um, our business and our website, we did a little bit of internet searching, and what should I find but this fantastic website <laughs> with a company called Simplified. Plain English is not plain language in South Africa. And if this issue is not yet determined, it may well be unenforceable and give scope to business in South Africa to exploit this definition. I had asked another plain language person from the US if they could recommend someone for our next conference. And she said, you have to have a netter. She taught me everything I know. So um, that was Melody who said that. We have never succeeded in getting regulations into the bill because the agency attorneys say it's just too hard. They can't write regulations in plain language. Well, that's bullshit, but that's where we are right now. Rachel is definitely a person who, if you want something done, Rachel's going to do it, and she's going to do it fast. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> we would include everything by mentioning nothing except sort of all government communications. It had to be crystal clear and we needed teeth, you know, no good if you can't enforce it. And I, I thought we needed some wriggle room for the agencies because they're full of, you know, government agencies are full of people who are very keen on plain English and they know a lot. I just wanted to bring back to mind that the idea behind the association was to have an independent, self-sustaining uh, organization for mutual aid and support in which meritocracy prevailed, that one was acknowledged and rewarded for one's service and accomplishment and uh, not uh, based on the government anointing experts or academia anointing stars. I'm the editor of the Plain Language column in the Michigan Bar Journal, and uh, that column itself has been running for 25 years. I've been the editor for 20 years, and it is the longest writing legal writing longest running uh, legal writing column uh, anywhere, as far as we know. I am most pleased to have so many people from around the world having uh, not only great intellectual exchange, but having a ball. And again, she was dropped from George Bush's council uh, on bioethics in 2004, and the justification for that claim is given um, in just as an adverbial clause. And finally, the thing that the writer thinks the reader will feel needs justification <coughs> is the fact that here's a woman 
what's a woman doing as a scientist winning Nobel Prizes? <laughs> so she, there's a lot of the text which I haven't reproduced here explaining why as a, as a little girl she was influenced to take up something like science. We have translation, which is the process of translating words and texts from one language into another. Localization teaches us that not only a content fit for translation should be well written, but also well structured. Any uh, individual or organization that is thinking about change starts with lots of reasons for not changing, and I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar with them, and not many reasons to actually try something new or different. But as you move them or help them move from one stage to the next, this balance shifts and then the reasons for changing become more uh, important for the organisation or the person, more salient. The Sydney Film Festival used to run for three weeks, so that was 55 or 60 films I was seeing. And I also took notes, in the dark, yes, with a pencil and paper, I only have 650 words. When you have a constraint like that, it's vital to be economical and, and efficient in your writing and it's a powerful incentive to write plainly. If you went and bought um, any kind of an electrical appliance, a mixer or a microwave oven, and you brought it home and it didn't work right, you'd return it, right? Well, why don't you return the language? Say to someone, excuse me, I'm sorry, but that language, um, that doesn't work for me. Can you make it clearer? Can you speak more directly? Can you speak honestly to me? Part of my process is to help them set standards so that the whole debate about how a document should look and sound doesn't come down to subjective things about what people think is good and bad writing. My role is doing to make sure that no one falls over, no one goes hungry, no one gets lost, no one gets lonely, no one is left alone and everyone goes home very happy at the end of an extremely fabulous experience. There were fortune cookies. Did you see the fortune cookies? <laughs> Apparently a fortune cookie is a foreign biscuit with subtitles. <laughs> I'm going to invite these speakers from all over the world to tell us a bit about the story as it is unfolding in plain language, that part of the story in their part of the world. President Obama's administration has expressed a strong commitment to transparency. Um, unfortunately, one of the, the big issues on that administration's plate right now is health care reform, and it, it really is disappointing to hear that, that some of the most significant criticism of the reforms that are being proposed is that no one can read the proposals. The uh, Canadian trade union movement, led by the Canadian Labour Congress and some of the public sector unions, have done a lot of work in clear language. Initially, they were talking to their members about clear language because they wanted to make their union activities more accessible, their publications and so on. Occasionally you bump into a minister at the airport, you go straight up to him and say, excuse me, Mr. Minister, it's very important that we must draft acts of parliament in Malaysia, uh, in Malaysia in plain language. And he said, yes, yes, I agree. And you just show him something and hopefully the message gets through. That, that's the way you do business in Malaysia. It's got to be top down. And there are actually more plain language consultants being certified today than ever before at two and soon to be three universities in Sweden. We are now struggling with a, a, scepticism, a scepticism of the actual government. So uh, this is the challenge for the Mexican go uh, government and particularly the citizen language in Mexico. Now in South Africa, the biggest issue now is we've got our laws. People are coming to us and saying, but how do I know if my documents are in plain language or not? We need to set a standard for plain language in South Africa, and that's why we need to understand our readers. We don't have enough knowledge about who our readers are yet to set those standards. More than 300 people have attended this conference, which makes it the largest ever uh, plain language event in the world. So congratulations to you all. So the purpose of a comic hoax is to uh, uh, show uh, in, in, a, in a clear way, in a plain way, uh, the difference between real expertise and fraudulent expertise. Um, so uh, just say, what the heck. Good afternoon. <laughs>